You are kidding me. Look at what we've got here. A Victor lawnmower tossed out on the side of the road. Someone's just dumped it right here because they can see there's a bit of scrub. Well, let's get out. Let's have a look at it. I've just got to put this in the boot, you know. Take it home, see what's wrong with it. See if we can get it going again. Far out, look at this thing. It's obviously got a bit of damage to the catcher there, but she's a Victor Commando, two stroke. I mean, they don't get better than this. Hasn't been cleaned or anything, but jeepers, can't be much wrong with it. And it's just left on the side of the road. Far out. People have just got more money than brains nowadays. Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we've got another Victor project. And you just saw that I've literally just picked this up off of the side of the road. Somebody's left it on the side in front of a bit of a scrub. And I found it on my way home from work. Anyway, I've unloaded it and I've just pushed it into my backyard. And straight away, I could feel that it was a little bit hard to push. You can see that left front wheel is slightly turned in there. And as you saw, it's got the damage on the catcher. I'm wondering if that's all that's wrong with this. But anyway, let's clean it up. Then we'll put some fuel in it and we'll see if she'll start. Oh, look at that muck around the engine, just crazy. And the muck in here as well. The thing's just choked with it. Like it's never been cleaned in its life. I mean, look at the muck in here behind the engine. I'm just gonna poke that through. I mean, the thing must have been overheating with all this, all this grime in and around the engine. I don't think this thing's ever been cleaned. Talk about poor maintenance. Well, already she's cleaning up a bit better, but there's still some stuff and stains. So let's spray some heavy duty degreaser on. Let that soak for a bit. And then we'll get into it with the high pressure cleaner again. All right, so I just mixed up some fresh two-stroke, 25 to one ratio, so 40 mils of oil to uh, one liter of fuel. Let's stick that in there. That's probably enough. Half a liter, put the cap on, turn the fuel tap on, and let's press the primer. Give her a few primes, pull the handle. Let's see if she'll run. can't get over the fact that somebody's thrown out what is actually a running mower now as i said it is actually quite hard to push i've got the camera dead straight on so you can see that this front left wheel is towed in there so what i want to do is just see how easy that is going to be to straighten up that wheel and i'm thinking i'll get the front left wheel off i pulled the hub cap off then with a screwdriver and then I'll get some couple of sets of pliers onto there and see if we can straighten that bracket out. Cause you can see it's visibly bent. Someone's hit something with it. All right, so let's pull that wheel off and let's see if with a little bit of persuasion, pop that off as well. A little bit of persuasion, if we can correct this toe in there. So I'll just put a bit of a flex. I feel like that came up a little bit. I think it needs a little bit more. You 
you know, I reckon that's just about done that. Let's pop the wheel back on and give it a push. For now, I'm just gonna leave that circlip off. I'll just give it a trial push. Ah, oh, so straight away, you can feel that that is a thousand percent easier to push. Before it was really difficult, and now it just rolls along normally. So that's obviously done the trick. Wheel alignment done. So with that wheel alignment fixed up, let's pop the circlip back in. Like that, too easy. And we'll get that hubcap back on. So let's just have a closer look at the under deck. You can see that it's actually in pretty good condition. There's no cracks or anything. The blades, there's no cracks in the blades. They're a little bit blunt. Blades are all good condition. So why don't we grab the grinder and we'll just sharpen up those blades so they're in uh, top condition. So as you saw, the lawnmower was a little bit hard to start. I mean, it took five or six pulls. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a little mini carburetor service on this Victor. Hopefully we can get it to start back on one pull. So we'll start by turning the fuel tap off, then we'll remove the fuel line, and then we'll undo the screw at the front of the primer bolt there. Now, this screw is actually also the main jet for the carburetor. So I'll just take that out. And as you can see here, I've carefully got my fingers holding that float bowl as I take that cap off. Now, just looking at this all-in-one screw slash main jet, I'll put that to one side. Now, as we take the float bowl off, there will be a little needle inside here. Now, that's why you've got to be careful when you pull it off in the first place. You don't want to lose this little needle because if you lose that, you know, you're going to be in um, problems and have to get a replacement one. I'll just have a closer look at this needle here. You can see it is actually in really good condition. And this would be the original Victor plastic needle. So I'll just put that to one side. And then we're gonna use some throttle body and carburetor cleaner. I just wanna clean up the grime on this primer cap bowl. So just spray around the main O-ring. I'll give that a wipe down. And then we'll spray through all of the capillaries that feed the main jet, and we'll give it a good clean up. Just continuing to spray around the place and into the carburetor there, and we'll clean up the flow. Now importantly, I'm gonna give the main jet a good clean out, because we wanna make sure we don't have any debris in that. That'll make all the difference for that starting. So I hope it'll start on the first pull when we reassemble it. So importantly, I want to reinsert that needle back into the correct spot. We'll put the uh, float back on. I've actually got a number of videos on Victor repairs, which you might be interested in on the channel. And carefully reinsert that back into the carburetor. We'll then get the main front screw, which is also the jet, as I explained and we'll screw that back in. And we just do this up modestly. We don't need to over tighten it because we do have a plastic housing for this carburetor body. Pop the fuel line back on and we're good to go for a bit of a test start. And then let's see how easily she'll start now. So, Put that fuel on. Give it a few primes. simple carb clean like we've just done. She's now starting first pull. So let's now have a look at what's going on with this capture. 
someone's going to town with the old duct tape. You know, I suppose MacGyver could fix anything with duct tape, so why not? So, to me, it looks like all they've done is blocked off those holes on the side. So I'm not really sure why they've done that. And to be honest, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with this catcher. <laughs> so, there you go, let's peel this duct tape off. I assume that this duct tape was somehow covering a broken piece of the catcher. But alas, maybe it's not. Oh, does look like it's going to peel off the old Victor logo though, unfortunately. So, might as well try and peel as much of it off as I can. I think when I was uh, high pressure cleaning the other, other side, I accidentally peeled it off. So, let's peel it off this side as well. At least then it'll be even. There we go. Alright, so having a closer look, it's pretty obvious that the reason that they duct taped up those two holes on the side of the catcher is because there's actually a couple of big holes in the mesh that's on top of the catcher. So let's get that out and see what we can do about that. So surprise, surprise, I might just have a collection of old Victor's lying around the place. Now this one's got a catcher, but as you can see, this catcher is broken. However, I just wonder what the inside is like of this catcher and whether we can take the inside out of this one and perhaps put it in the other catcher, which actually matches that mower. But before I do too much, cause who knows what creepy crawlies are crawling through that, I'm just gonna give it a quick high pressure clean. So having cleaned that catcher off that junk Victor mower, that one which is actually beyond repair, we can see I pulled the internal out and it was just pressed in, it wasn't even screwed in, but it is actually different. It's a one piece that came out of the junk Victor, whereas it was actually two pieces that came out of our Rescue Victor, which we're working on today. However, it is similar type material. So I'm wondering if I can just cut a section out of this, a couple of sections, and let's see if we can actually repair for free our Victor catcher. Let's cut a couple of repair pieces with our Dremel. All right. Let's see how well that will fit into our mower piece. Not bad. I think that we can make that do. What do you reckon? Hey? I'm not sure whether this is going to work because it's plastic. In actual fact, I might do a test rivet on this piece of plastic over here just to see if it breaks the plastic or not. I think if I can use a rivet, it'll be really good. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. That hasn't broken that plastic at all there. So let's use some rivets to put those pieces in there. there you have it one patched up piece of the inner catcher from the other junk catcher so let's reinstall that in our catcher and hopefully we're good to go so let's get our catcher piece back in so let's pop it in there like that and see if we can line that up reasonably well
There we go. That was much easier than I thought it would be. So there you go. We've got the repaired inner reinstalled in the catcher. And apart from a couple of visible pop rivets on the outside, you wouldn't know the difference. So folks, something that I've also noticed is that the cord does not always fully retract when you start them off. So let's have a look to see if we can retention the pull starter as well. So to start with, we are gonna to wanna to take the top cover and fuel tank off. So turn the fuel tap off, disconnect the fuel line like that, and then take off the top cover. And then we should be able to lift that fuel tank straight off. Line, thread it out. So now that we've got the fuel tank off, we can actually probably remove some of these other extra plastic bits out of the way. So the next thing we're going to do is to use our 12 mil socket to undo these three bolts, and that's gonna take the whole starter mechanism off and expose the top end of the engine. Now, in here, you can see we do have this O-ring that's around there. You do have to be careful with that because that's the crankcase O-ring. The other thing that I will do is just pop a old rag over the top of the engine just to stop any debris falling into the engine. Okay, now the pull start, when it's spinning, it moves out like that. And what you want to do is you want to use some vice grips to uh, get on a diagonal and to lock that so that it does not come out like that. Just like that. So with that now clamped, we can get our 24 mil socket or spanner. And what we can do is we can loosen and undo that bolt there. Now, once we've started that, we should be able to hold the bolt with one hand and spin with our right hand here, like this. There we go, that nut's come out completely. And we should be able to pull this out. You can see there's a little little rubber o-ring on there like that and you can see in here we've got this uh, clip here now you can see this clip here has that little notch up like that so that's how that should look now if we flip this over the pull start mechanism should just come out now now you can Tell straight away, this is quite oily inside of here, which is probably what is causing it not to actually recall properly. Probably needs a decent cleaning. As I said, this is really oily. It's probably got crankcase oil slipping past that seal that I showed you before. We'll pull that spring out and we'll give that spring a really good clean as well. All right, so I've got all of that oil off of that spring. Now let's start the tough process of actually getting this spring back in. It's probably gonna take quite a while. So as you can see, we've got that spring cleaned up. So what we wanna do is we wanna just flip this over and this little hook just has to catch on there as it goes on. So flip that over line it up roughly into position, and then we can turn this in the direction which the pull starter will pull. Straight away, we can feel that's making tension, so we can release that back off. So at this stage, we can put our cord back in. It'd probably be advisable to put a new cord, but I don't have a new cord on me, so just put the old cord back in, and we can wind that around. And we can just put the cord in that little notch there for now. And we can just sit that back on there like that. 
So then we can flip it over. Now this is probably the most important part of the whole procedure. It's actually reassembling the clip on this bolt. Now, if I flip this over, you can see there's a flat side across there. So importantly, the little notch on the spring needs to come up into that notch like that, around that way. If you don't do this, it won't operate correctly. So we'll put this spring on now. Put that on like that. And then put the flat side get that little notch in there like that and just push that in like that there we go and then we can put our nut back on and then we can screw that in. At this point, we can get our socket and our vice grips, and we can do that up firm again. There we go. So now that we've got this tightened up, what we'll do, you can see this little bit of slack there, so we'll just bring this back and pop that in the notch like that, and then we'll do a revolution around here. And then we can actually thread this uh, rope through the hole there. And we can pop that piece back in there like that. And then we can grab our handle while we're here. And do a couple of knots so our handle doesn't come off. And straight away we can test our pull start and we can see that it's repaired. So with the pull start repaired, it's time to reassemble it back onto the engine. So simply line up the main holes with where they go on the crankcase there and push that in. Just firm, not overly tight. We then need to put our plastics back in. So in hindsight, we probably didn't need to take this plastic piece off of the fuel tank. We didn't realize that in the beginning and it's probably gonna be easier to install it on the fuel tank before we actually put the fuel tank on. So let's put this back on right now. So we then just need to reinstall our fuel tank. So pop the handle through the appropriate place and then line up the bolt holes. pop this little cover back on and then we just need to remember to put our fuel line back on and we're good to go for a test start you can see that pull start is fully retracting on its own now so there you go folks we picked up this mower off the side of the road today. Literally somebody had dumped this and look how good it's come up. We fixed the wheel, fixed the catcher, done a little bit of minor servicing to the engine and overall we've given it a good clean up. And as you can see, this is a really good Victor mower. This mower with the proper maintenance will far outlive anything that you can buy brand new. So it's a real shame that someone had just dumped it like they had on the side of the road. Look, if you're interested in seeing any other DIY home, cars, lawnmowers, do feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you have liked this video, do hit that like button. But until next time, have a good evening.